Bible the Jehovah's Witnesses gave me has some hot takes. Before I went into quarantine, I had been talking to some Jehovah's Witnesses. I was interested to hear about the religion from people who still believed. I also was kind of hoping that something I'd say would maybe plant a seed of doubt in one of them. They had a kid with them, and I know that that religion can really mess up a kid's life. I've heard the stories. It's unimaginable. If nothing else, I hoped that maybe I could show them that atheists aren't evil. I was honest with them about my lack of religious beliefs. I know that they're hoping to convert me and I know that it's not going to happen. So I figured the least I could do is be as respectful and polite as possible to try and show them that outsiders aren't so bad. But we talked several times. They would come every few weeks on Saturday mornings. I'd usually answer the door in my pajamas. The second to last time I talked to them, they gave me this Bible. They pointed out this section in it that answers different questions, some of which I've asked them. There are 20 questions. Things like, who is God and how can I draw closer to God? All the way to things like, is the Bible scientifically accurate and how can you cope with your anxiety? I was flipping through looking at some of these when I came across one of the pages that had in big bold letters, is God to blame for human suffering? Of course, I would say that within their mythology, God kind of has to be to blame for human suffering. If he's all powerful and all knowing, he could have come up with an infinite number of ways to do things differently that wouldn't have caused human suffering. But I noticed that the very first verse that it gave was from the book of Job. I've talked about the book of Job on my channel before and I have about a 50% success rate of remembering to say it as Job and not Job. Before even getting too much into it, my mind immediately went to how weird it is to use Job as an example if they're trying to argue that God is not to blame for human suffering. Some like to argue that God is not to blame for what happened to Job because it was Satan who finalized and decided what was going to happen to Job. But he did so basically under the instruction of God. After Satan says that Job wouldn't be so loyal if his life wasn't so cushy, God says in chapter 1 verse 12 that it's okay if Satan wants to go ahead and just totally screw over Job. In my King James Bible it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold all that he hath in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from his presence of the Lord. In the one the Jehovah's Witnesses gave me, that part says, Then Jehovah said to Satan, Look, everything he has is in your hand, only do not lay your hand on the man himself. So Satan went forth from the presence of Jehovah. So, same thing, slightly different wording. God basically says, Yeah, go ahead and screw with the guy who I was just saying is so great. I don't care if you make him suffer, just don't hurt the actual body. But it gets even worse when God decides it's okay for Satan to f*** with Job's body as well. In chapter 2 verses 4, 5, and 6, Satan says that Job would fail to worship God if he was hurt or if he thought his life was at risk. So God says, fine, hurt him all you want, just don't kill him. All that is to say that God not only allowed for Job to suffer and for his kids and his servants to be killed, but he encouraged it. All just to prove a point to Satan. Anyways, the first verse is Job chapter 34 verse 10 and it says, It is unthinkable for the true God to act wickedly, for the Almighty to do wrong. Interesting. I thought my next step should be to read it in context. I have read the book of Job, and relatively recently at that, but my memory isn't the best so I figured I should look over it again. I'll break it down for you because frankly the Bible is boring and often difficult to read. So basically Job is complaining about all the awful things that have been happening to him lately and saying he doesn't see why God would do this to him when he's been so good about all his religious stuff. He does all the things that God wants him to do so why is God punishing him? Now of course you and I know the answer it's because God was trying to win a bet but one of the dudes Job was talking to didn't see it that way. He got all pissed off and went on this whole rant which is what this little quote is from He's basically saying that God doesn't do anything wicked. He can't do anything wicked. Obviously allowing all these awful things to happen to Job just to prove a point to say it must be good enough reason because God wouldn't do it if it wasn't good reason. That would be acting wickedly. The true God can't do that. That's unthinkable. In context, this quote is kind of saying that Jehovah can't be the true God. The true God can't act wickedly. Doing these things to Job without good reason would be acting wickedly. He did it just to prove a point to Satan. 
that's not very good reason, therefore it's wicked, therefore Jehovah can't be the true God. So instead of proving that God isn't responsible for human suffering, this really kind of just proves that Jehovah can't be the true God. At least that's what I get out of it anyway. Well, that was fun and interesting. Let's do another one. Okay, the next one is from James chapter 1 verse 13. It says, when under trial, let no one say, I am being tried by God. For with evil things, God cannot be tried, nor does he himself try anyone. The first thing that stands out to me is that God doesn't try anyone. I understand this to mean that he doesn't test anyone, like test their faith or whatever. This one is defeated by the verse we were just talking about by that whole book because he was testing Job's faith the whole time. But let's dig deeper than that. I like the book of Job. It's probably my favorite book in the Bible, but we've already talked about it. So let's talk about other examples in the Bible of God testing people. Let's take a look at Genesis chapter 22. We'll start off reading it from the book the Jehovah's Witnesses gave me. Now after this time, the true God put Abraham to the test. That's just the start of it, but it's a good point already. So let's take a look at it in my King James. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. So back to that verse, does God not test people or does he just not test people in evil ways? In this story, as many of you probably know, God tells Abraham to offer his son Isaac as a burnt offering. So basically kill the kid and burn his body as, as an offering to God. Abraham has no problem with this. So he takes his son Isaac up to the mountains to murder him. Just before he kills him, he sees an angel. So the angel comes down, he's like, haha, JK, OMG, I cannot believe you were actually about to do that. But for reals, here's a ram to kill instead. So he takes the ram and he kills that poor little guy instead. If this story isn't an example of God testing people in evil ways, then I don't know what would be. It's seriously disturbing that this God would want people to be willing to kill their own children at the drop of a hat. Like it's no big deal. The next verse listed is from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. It says, throw all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. I'm assuming he and him here refers to God. I have a couple of thoughts right off the bat here without even looking at context. My first thought is that if he cares for all the people in the world, or even just his chosen people, he sure has a funny way of showing it. Job was loyal and faithful, and I assume his family was as well, but God was still willing to kill his children and his servants just to prove a point. He killed Lot's wife just for looking back at her burning home. He had Jephthah kill his own daughter as a sacrifice to him. This one's actually really interesting because Jephthah made a vow to sacrifice whatever came out of his home first when he gets home from war, if it means he can win the war, and then he was surprised when his daughter was the one who came out first to greet him. Of course, the Jehovah's Witnesses have a slightly different version of this story. ex Baby has a really interesting video about that. I'll leave a link to that in the description and in a card. My point is that it sure doesn't seem like God cares equally about people given how often he kills them or lets them die in the Bible. Now let's look at this in context. Right after that verse, it says, Keep your senses and be watchful, for your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking to devour someone. Spooky. So basically, give your anxieties to God and you won't have to worry anymore. Uh, but don't forget the devil still might devour you. Oh, but doesn't it feel great not to worry anymore? Yeah, it doesn't really make sense to me either. I don't feel like I've reached any decent conclusions with the help of this study Bible. I still feel the same way. If there is a God who is all powerful and all knowing, he has to be responsible for human suffering. He made things in such a way that Anne Frank would die a horrible death at a young age. He made things in such a way that 1,517 people would die when the Titanic sank. He didn't have to make things that way. He could have prevented you know who from rising to power. He could have moved the iceberg and saved the 1,517 people, but he didn't. And this is just one reason why I say that the Christian God really kind of can't exist. He's supposed to be all knowing. So he knew the Titanic was about to sink. He's supposed to be all powerful. So he could have done something about it. He's supposed to be all loving, so he should have done something about it. It just doesn't make sense. But that's just one argument, and it's all I have for today. So, thank you all so much for watching. Extra special thank you to my patrons, who are listed right here. Extra, extra special thank you to my top tier spooky bitch patrons, Phelan and Aided Furball. 
If you would like to become a patron, that link is in the description below. Like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, stay unholy, my friends.